Welcome, 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 dear all, to twitch.tv slash Winsleydale Cheddar. This is Samastream, your eighth favourite manga podcast. Because if you're listening to nine at the same time, you should probably get a job. I'm your Samring host, Sir Winsleydale Cheddar, here alongside your non samring hosts, Caster UK and Hoven with an H. How are you guys doing this week? Uh, pretty good. I've started playing Near Automata uh, at the request of my friend, which is a it's a spi- it's a sequel to a spin-off of Dragon Guard, um, which is a franchise known for having a continuity more complicated than Kingdom Hearts. Holy shit! Yes, and, um, I, and I don't even know Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, so like basically, Dragon Guard is this fantasy game which had loads of different endings. One of which was a, like kind of a joke ending reference to End of Evangelion, which then birthed that ending birthed a spin off called Near, and now it's got this sort of pseudo sequel called Near Automata. Um, although Near Automata itself, you, you don't actually have to play any of the other Dragon Guard or Near games to understand what it what's going on. Like, there's just yeah. in fact, like, it literally only references the first Near, like, it doesn't. So it's um it's pretty easy to follow. Uh, it's about it's about like androids um, and machines in kind of this post 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 apocalyptic um, Earth, and it's um yeah it's got a really really cool soundtrack. Um, and I, I, you're saying I it's I easy to it. follow. Sorry, how you're saying it's easy to follow? How many endings have you gotten through so far? Um, there's like, t- uh, well I've gotten three. But two are joke endings, so um, <laughs> so I've only really properly gotten one. I've done th- one proper playthrough, which is Route A, but there's one ending which is happens if you eat a fish. If you eat a fish in game, an item, you get one of the endings, and it's uh, just that the fish made you paralyzed and you short circuited because <laughs> you're playing an android. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the credits just roll super fast. <laughs> okay, that's great. It's that almost as good as, as as that Silent Hill ending where you find out the entire thing's re- being run by a dog with like computer screens. Oh, yeah. so, so it's exactly like Undertale. <laughs> that's that's my only gaming gaming comparison. So maybe uh, uh, yeah. one day a similar fate will occur there. Yeah. Also, but- it stars an android who is basically just wearing a is basically just a silver haired girl in a in a French maid outfit. So. If you're wondering why my friends wanted me to play this so much. A French maid outfit specifically designed so if you if you manipulate the camera properly. You can yeah, you can see her yeah. underwear. Um yeah. But yeah, um I've seen a couple of let's plays of that. Um as as far as I get as far as I gathered, it is pretty simple to follow up until the end of the the first ending. Yeah. And then you learn the truth. And the oh to play like three more versions of the game <laughs> yeah yeah i I've, I've yet to start my second playthrough um because yeah the because f- the first ending is very straightforward it's like oh okay happy ending i guess but i hear that's not how it goes after that <laughs> yeah because you, you get the first ending it's like, oh wait wait am, am i not fighting the oh okay oh oh we're done oh oh okay then <laughs> I <was expecting> more. <laughs> yeah oh, and then you play it again and <laughs> yeah I haven't even got Sato on the clusterfuck that is Kingdom Hearts like narrative. Uh, there's a very good lecture on YouTube that I recommend people check out uh, called Kingdom Hearts, a CWC lect. No, it was called. I don't know. It's just look up Kingdom Hearts lecture and you should find it. Okay. Yeah. Like, this I've... guy tries to explain to his friends who have never like played any of the games the entire chronology and lore of the series. <laughs> and it's well, amazing. Kingdom Hearts 1 to people and then it's just like. And then there are these nobodies. I thought they were heartless. No, they're different. So who are they then? There's so, so thought... there's the Keyblade, and then there's the Keyblade. <laughs> and there's about 13 of them. Why are there 13 of them? Well, there's going to be seven of light and six of darkness. But why are they, why are they uneven? Shut up and pay attention. When, when I said there were 13, there's actually Everyone 20. Everyone is Sora. Everyone is Zenith. Everyone is Sora. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Kingdom Hearts? Everyone is Sora. Um, or Xehanort. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> it's in the end. It's like there was there were seven of light and thirteen of darkness, and everyone was Sora or Xehanort. And Kingdom Hearts three is, is going to come out when we're all about fifty. Yeah. Well, I just know Goofy's in it. Goofy is great. Oh, uh, which means okay, which means it may tie into the uh, twenty seventeen uh, reiteration of Ducktales, which means I've got to play it. Got a DuckTales level in Kingdom Hearts 3, guys. That would be fucking... There have been, though. Isn't all the, all the characters from DuckTales are in it. Like, you meet, like, yeah, Scrooge, Scrooge is Dewey, all... Dewey, Dewey, Louie. He's just taken over Hollow Bastion, which is, like, the main boss fight of the second one of also, the first is, game. Also, is isn't, like, isn't Scrooge the guy who makes up the um, salty ice cream? Wait, what? Yeah, I, I, I don't like to think hard about that. It's He's really the one who invented the salty ice cream that was, Roxas got all sad about. There's like an infamous clip of like one of the characters from Kingdom Hearts and his friend is dying and he's like, no, who else will I have ice cream with? <laughs> yeah, there's an entire side game based on how important this salty ice cream is and how it's salty and sweet at the same time. Then it just appears in Kingdom Hearts 2 no, with no explanation. It's just it's really creepy. The ice, it's because the ice cream is a symbol of friendship between the, the three main characters of that game. And it's a game something. no one played. <laughs> because there are so many spin-off games on so many random consoles. Yeah. Alright, so, so now so now let's go on to talk about Duncan Rompa. Uh, oh, and fuck. Persona. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've Okay. I've just well, I go on to oh. Yeah, yeah, go on. I was worried for a second there. I was loading up Fairy Tale and I went onto the Crunchyroll manga. It was like volumes are tem- um, temporarily unavailable. Oh for crying out loud. <laughs> But uh, no, I reloaded it. It's all good. Okay, the, uh, the alpha. Okay, right. Uh, I've just had my last exam uh, this session, so uh, I've s- I've still got my thesis to defend, and then I can finally get on my work on Penganza. Also, I'll have a bachelor's degree, so I can finally be pretentious and sign all my emails with Mati Novak B A. I'm saying very quiet. I did a four years mar- I did a four year masters this year. More pretentious. Oh. My friend's doing masters. You beat me to mm. it. Yeah. Uh, I, do, I do a science, so I only have to do an extra year. Also, this will be a revolutionary podcast because I'm trying something new, guys. I will be recording this podcast while standing up. I've noticed my <laughs> s- stomach muscles tend to be a little less tense then, so... I thought I'd try that and see if I summon more or less. Uh, okay. Also, I may be dying um, uh, after two hours um, of standing up in one place, but uh, but we'll see. I'll guess we'll see. Yes, guys, please subscribe to the to, to the Samus Dream to the Samus Dream Patreon so we can afford to buy to, to buy Wednesday Dale a chair. <laughs> <laughs> right, a chair on top of which I can stand up. Shit, and it's just like if you if you guys can get us fifteen dollars, we can buy a chair. It's a it's a lot it's a lot to ask. We know <laughs> we can rent out this chair monthly from this place. We know <laughs> a- every single dollar counts. Every single one. Uh, right. Uh, so speaking of patron, uh, let's move on to fairy tale. That's a segue. Could we move Fairy Tale back a bit? Because I've read through it once, and I just want to scan through it quickly again because I forgot again I was recapping it. All, All right. right, My Hero Academia. Uh, that, no, it, wait, which one is next? It's Food Wars, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Food Wars is before Sorry. that. So uh, okay, yeah. I'll move on to my other, to my other one. <laughs> okay, so in Food Wars this week we get a, we get we get the fight that was um, hinted last week. Between Rindo, Rindo and Third Seat Guy. And. Okay, I'm gonna go through this chapter before giving my opinion, without trying to give my, my opinions of it, because it was a bad week to decide to give me this chapter. Oh? Um, Why? We start off with Rindo pulling out a crocodile. <laughs> and everyone's freaking out because it's a fucking crocodile, and of course you do. She drops it. It chases the it chases the brainwashed um, idol girl across the floor. Then she picks it back up again, and fucking murders it. <laughs> it, <laughs> costs, it, 
<laughs> in a reasonably scary scene as blood splatters across the page <laughs> in a flash of everyone going, what the literal fuck? And then even eyes um, instantly skinning the thing. And then we flash back to Rindo, to Rindo being um, wacky and goofy and running around the world. Because apparently her speciality is like speciality weird ingredients. She her abilities her um, council of ten abilities that she's travelled around the world and tasted literally everything. So makes meals out of weird stuff. They they to give an example they show a scene where um, at the festival where she ate everything. She literally ate everything. She went to the insect restaurant that no one ever wants to go to. And ate a cricket full course. Q She's got to, Q got to try everything out. from Zootopia. Sorry. Yeah. Um, she they mosaic out what she's eating, which, <laughs> considering what else this author's done, I really don't want to think of the connotations of that. Um, but then they go into essentially saying what Rindo's character is, and they. This is honestly quite spot on for me because they give three examples, and I'll get onto this at the end. But the first, they essentially give the give the they essentially say Rindo is made up of three different personalities: the refined connoisseur, the um, the um, essentially Indiana Jones explorer, and the fan service booby girl. <laughs> oh, sorry, um, I mean the brave barbarian. Um. And okay, I'm going to get to the end of this chapter because we. I have we a then feeling to... we're going to need to fight, Caster. We might, um, because. But the one thing I do like about this chapter is we get um, the third thief speciality and a really cool two-page spread of him being declared as the ramen master, and I want to see what he does. Okay. Because this chapter. Have is... I ever said? Rindo best girl? Yeah, you have. <laughs> Oz, she was until the She's... writer showed he had no fucking clue what he was doing with her character. Oh like, my god, this... I can't believe you. And then... I, um, I and love this chapter. Fight, 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 okay, fight, fight. Yeah, fight. She was awesome in this. Oh, she just... She's fucking hilarious. I love the part where she drops the alligator and picks it up like, bad boy, no escaping. Just like... The sheer personality she she exudes throughout the whole chapter. Oh, I love the whole I I love the whole gimmick of her like going around and like finding her own ingredients. I think that's really awesome. Um, I thought this was cool. <laughs> I I honestly don't see why you're so annoyed by this. It's because the if you look at the aspect of Rinder's character where she's like the bits you mentioned. Yes, they're funny and they're in character. Essentially, going back to the, the, the bit where she said hey, she's made us of three characters. It's like, and my response is yes. It's because you've shown in this chapter you didn't know how to co coalesce them all into one. The what the Rindo I like is the Flora Rindo who goes fucking around the world okay. and plays. I with... I just think it's a three tiered thing, but okay. <laughs> it would be if her messing around and having fun with animals didn't jar so horribly with what was actually quite a good scary scene where she just skinned the fucking crocodile. Like, I, that I, thing... I think that's just that's just an over-the-top scene of showing her, like, just very, like, being incredibly ruthless with the way that she's able to deal with ingredients. I, I don't I don't see why she's that's jarring to you. She's never shown to be ruthless before. She's meant to be... Uh, she's, she's always she's... been kind of a wild-card character. Yeah, but only... Essentially, just she's just been fucking around all the time. She's never shown to be evil or ruthless, and it. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna okay. it's gonna come down to how you interpret the chapter. I guess just, I, I I don't I don't know like maybe I don't know this this didn't rub me the wrong way. This was just dealing with an ingredient or something. Perhaps she had a reason to kill it while it was alive for the flavor. Um, the scene with the crocodile really didn't bother me all that much. Um, I just thought I thought it was pretty in character. Yeah, I, d I didn't get evil like you did either. I, d I didn't gather that from from did that character. Did we not see moment. the same scene? Did we not see the scene where? Also, I wanted to note the scene where she got uh, she skins the crocodile. Her boobs are noticeably notice noticeably smaller because it's not a fan service scene. Did you anyone else notice that? 
Yeah. I mean, inconsistent boob sizes for the sake of fan service is kind of a staple of this manga. Uh, so I thought it was quite is. powerful that when they go for what to me looks like a really terrifying shot, they they downplay the sexuality the sexuality because I'm just like, okay, credit to the series if you want to give that impression, fine. I guess it's just. I honestly, this was I enjoyed this chapter more than any chapter yeah. of Food Wars we've covered. I, I love. I was that entertained by it. I guess I see it now, but I didn't go into this chapter uh, just thinking. All right, let's uh, let's examine the boob sizes this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I, I like. Uh, go on. Also, I'll give. You... I've, I'm not, not going to say it, but <laughs> I've I've got only a few words to say. I like this chapter a lot. Uh, Rinda's been a yeah. just a lot of fun. Uh, Megishima has been pretty cool as well. Um, as you said, the uh, the last panel is pretty badass. Uh, so this matchup seems like it's going to be it's going to be just fun and creative. And in the end, that's all I require. Food balls. I I, ne I never really uh, search for any tension in that series, so, mm. so, so yeah, uh, it's fun and creative, and that's what I like here. Yeah, I, th I think Rindo was completely awesome in this chapter, and even the fan service shot I didn't mind, because um, it wasn't like, I don't know, it felt, it wasn't like comparable to some of the other ones, where it's like, um, okay, we, we're getting into some, the, you know, the gender politics of fan service here, and I don't want to go too deep into it, because it's a bit, it's, it's shaky ground, but, um, it's not on. It's not on the level of something like the one with Alice's and Erin's two like younger siblings who are like, yeah. we're just cute little bears. Like it's not as demeaning as that. Like <laughs> she's still having fun with it. it. It still feels in character. Like she is totally having fun with it. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I. I. I, don't know. I think she looked pretty good. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it might it, it might just be because I really I enjoyed Rindo before this chapter and I I'll have to see where it goes but Rindo was one of the few things left in Food Wars I was just like yes I legitimately enjoy this because she'd been built up she'd been built up interesting like um given the mystery the um the wacky comic the wacky humor she felt like she didn't fit in central at all and there was always a question of why is she the second seat why is she so great. I I think this totally this, justifies that. <laughs> this chapter felt to me like the writer was just like was trying to reach for an explanation for that, grabbed literally three things at once once and couldn't blend them together. But did he have to blend them together? I, I, to make why a did he have to? Yeah. To make a psychotic um, psychopath, no. But to make an actual character, yes. Why can't a character be multi have multiple facets to them? <laughs> like I don't, I don't think these clash with each other. <laughs> or rather, I think the whole point of the character is that they in a, they sort of clash with each other, but not in a way that like I don't I don't really see why you find these three aspects being different a problem. I guess I guess if if we're shown later on that they do mesh within window and it works, then fine. Uh, I, I'm judging it based on one chapter. I'm... But it's it seems to be jumping around the place a lot, and it, it, I found it when I was going through the chapter. I was just like, I couldn't. I was enjoying it less and less with each page I read. Well, oh. Barnaby, I uh, I kind of think that uh, even uh, even though I didn't really gather psychotic from this chapter, uh, theoretically uh, psychotic and uh, random and wacky uh, can be two sides of the same coin, so they can mesh together. True. I just don't. I just don't think she's meant to be psychotic. That it, it's. I think she has a wild and aggressive demeanor, not a psychotic one. Has she shown to be aggressive before now? Uh, that's just like that's just the way that, as in like the way she holds herself, kind of. Oh. I guess we're, uh, we've we've seen a lot of characters whose personality um, change when they cook. Uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Kurokiba being the primary example. So maybe True, the, maybe this is just that, a case of it. They were going for. That, that's what I thought they were going for when when she instantly picks up the knife, knife and kills the fucking crocodiles. It's like, oh okay, she's te she's like Kurokiba to like the third or fourth level, but then she jumped back into the happy smiley fan service Rindo, 
and then she jumped back again, and then they then they added the entire thing about her being with her having the explorer gimmick, and it's just like it's a cool idea to cook random ass animals, but it, it feels more like a gimmick than like a style any of the any of the others have. I, I think once you just met a perfect storm of things, I didn't want the series to go with here. Okay, it it didn't yeah. bother me at all. I so, I, cool. I, I, uh, <laughs> So, so moving on to to another character, I wonder why uh, Magishima is so effective here, uh, given that uh, we haven't really seen from him. Uh, Maybe that's exactly why he's so effective. We haven't seen much of him, and suddenly he just leaves so much of an impression on this last page. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm slightly surprised that... Essentially, this is a really cool introduction for him. But it, it, it feels like he got through the first round for no other reason, without him being seen, for no other reason that he, the, the author di- didn't think the first round would gonna, was going to be interesting to draw. I was, it was weird. I was expecting like the, the flip-flop for this to be like, um, we don't see any of, any of Megashima's first round, he wins. We don't see any of Megashima's second round, he loses. So I'm not entirely sure what the point of him having a completely unseen first round was narratively, when they could have just put in another mm. competitor. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty surprising, but... I guess... I guess we'll never know. So, uh, shall we move on to my hero? Alright. Alright, so we start things off with a colour page. I usually would, wouldn't would make a big deal out about this, but uh, Horikoshi's colours are intense. Uh, this this looks uh, lovely. Um, Team Naitai proceed through the cor- corridors. Uh, Kirishima worries about Tamaki, but Fat Gums tells him not to worry because he's a true man. Uh, and I sees uh, three of the eight min- mini bosses uh, have been defeated by Tamaki alone, and we cut to Bubble Girl, who interviews some of the Shia Hasakai underlings. Uh, they give the backstory of the organization, saying their old boss once- was once a noble yakuza who didn't want them to be recognized as villains. Uh, we see th- that now some of the underlings aren't as loyal to the new boss as they used to be, uh, to the old one. Mm. One of the eight mini-bosses, who apparently has a terraforming quirk, targets Aizawa, who gets protected by Fat Gum and, accidentally, Kirishima at the same time. Uh, they get knocked away to a different room, and confronted by two more mini-bosses. Uh, then Kirishima t- turns into his unbreakable form, which gets broken, as he gets punched by the pun- punchy punchy plague mask bloke uh, and his hardened skin breaks and he starts ble- bleeding heavily. Uh, Fat Gum tries to reciprocate, but uh, his punch gets blocked by a telepath who creates a barrier between him and the fighter. Uh, they comment on the matchup between them, a lance and a shield v- versus two shields. Uh, but then wonder if mm, they can even call Kirishima a shield with how easily he broke. Uh, Thank Gum encourages Kirishima so that his spirit doesn't break as well, and we end the chapter on the proclamation that they're going to win and go back to everyone else. So, um, good chapter, but I'm looking more looking forward to what happens next week. Uh, right at the, the very end we see a panel with younger Kirishima, uh, back when he had black hair. So I'm hoping mm. that soon we, we're going to see uh, Kirishima's origin story. Because remember, hey. uh, he, he's been inspired to become a he- uh, to become a hero by an already existing he- hero, Crimson Riot. And I uh, just remember this bit because I've just uh, seen the Saturday episode um, <laughs> where they pick the hero names. So I'm uh, wondering if this is how we're going to see how this came about. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it, it was a very much a build-up chapter, and it wasn't much a say on it. It just, I get, the, main, the, main, the main impression I got was that Kirishima's way out of his league here. And I'm in, wondering how Fat Gum's going to cope fighting while also pre- protecting him, because we've all, we've already seen Tamaki walk over these people, 
Was it Tamaki? Yeah, Tamaki yeah. walk over these three of these people. So having Fat Gun just being able to wipe out the next two would be boring. So I'm wondering what the twist is. But, uh, well, I think I think Fat Gun's said it already that Tamaki is um, uh, probably more powerful than even most of the pro heroes there. So, uh, so, so I guess we shouldn't be that surprised. Oh yeah. But no, I'm, I'm just wondering what the what the twist is if we just have oh, and more heroes fight the villains and win, and more hero. I'm, I want to know what's special about this about this fight that we're watching it, because I'm 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 like I don't know what's going to happen because it seems a bit up in the air. But I'm like, is is Fat Game going to die? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. But I'm just like, well, then what's the conclusion of it? What's the point of this fight? If anyone's going to die, it's um, it's Mario, because everyone says yeah, he is. Definitely. Well, I'm I'm waiting for him to nearly die, and then Deku turn up to save him to prove that he's the he is the successor for all, the like the right successor for all for one, mm. because otherwise, because that needs to be addressed at some point in this arc. <laughs> one for all, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah, um, and then yeah, but nah, yeah. I'm a, bit, yeah. I'm a bit annoyed that they're just going through all these villains so quickly. Um, yeah. I think for me, it's just a case of... I, this chapter was okay, but um, considering that we've just had a big fight with Kirishima, I'd have rather have seen something within the diff, with a different character. And I know Fat Gum's in it too, but it's but, still... it's still Kirishima's still a very key player in this fight. Yeah. So I'd have preferred to see some a totally different set of characters just for the sake of variety. Yeah, I get the girls, uh, for instance. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get. I it guess is, it's getting awkward. I guess we should just uh, maybe count it as uh, as just Kirishima's uh, designated arc, like uh, like we had when with Ida and we had one with Markigo. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. In which case, do we want to start a count of how many chapters we go through before a female character gets a prominent fight? Uh, yeah, let's do that. It might it might start to hurt. Well, we well we and like see how long it, we have it, to no, wait. Properly. The wounds the, no, that will if it thing is if we come out of this arc without having any of the prominent female characters fight, I will actually be more annoyed than I would have been because I've been keeping up with the anime and I rewatched um Uraraka and Bakugo's fight. Oh, that's such a good and fight. It's such a good fight and everyone is so high on her as a character and like, you know, like like I'm seeing like other people who are just getting into it through the anime being like, Man, I, I love all of the I love the female characters in this show. It's so cool. And I'm like, oh if if the man if if the current material can't follow up on that, that'll be a huge letdown. <laughs> I'd be really interested to see if the anime adds filler stuff for the female characters. You, you know what? I I had something to say about this. I uh I keep be, uh, hearing people praise uh, the uh, Uraraka and Bakugo fight, but um I'm I'm kind of noticing that um uh, in the anime at least they they seem to vilify Bakugo a lot for for daring to punch a girl, and in and in the end, uh, I think nearly all the female matches uh, when when the female characters lost ended them uh, with them being defeated by uh, via ring out. So um... I don't think Bakugo was Villa. I think in the show, characters were like, "How dare you punch a girl, girl!" And then like, no, then no. In the scene after, one of them went up to him. They're like, "How could you punch your weak little girl like that?" And he went weak did you see her yeah. she was giving it her all like yeah. that scene was still in there so i, I don't think it was vilifying him yeah but they, they up oh, but then they break it down because Isawa literally shouts down the guy directly in the crowd for saying what the fuck are yeah. you talking about yeah and it's really cool it's like of course he's hitting a girl she's an she is a threat what do you what you think she's helpless yeah, I guess so. It's uh, it's it's still bo uh, the ring out thing. It still bothers me, but uh, but yeah, that is. I guess so. The other ones, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of those other, a lot of the other girls were either defeated as one and done, 
or actually no wait because who's the girl who creates stuff uh, um, Momo yeah you're yeah. yeah her and the entire she got hit she got knocked out she got a ring out in one shot but the entire point of that was because um black crow gra- black crow guy knew oh, he had yeah. to eat it instantly and it that was a character arc thing of like she didn't have a chance to show her stuff and she still hasn't hopefully at some point we'll get we'll get the arc of you are you, you are incredibly powerful. She she she's at UA for special on spe, on special recommendation, the same as Todoroki. But we still have no idea why. Um, I'm I'm so, I think it, that might have just been an art a character building thing, setting her up for later. Yeah, yeah, kind but... of continued a little by the fight she and Todoroki had in that tr- whole training arc. But yeah. um, yeah, to see it followed up on again would we kind of need that. Yeah, for her, yeah, it, it, for her, I understand well, that. But for the other, for the other girls, I, um, yeah, it, it just seemed kind of patronizing to me. But yeah, I guess so. Uh, ooh, uh, sh- uh, I just wanted to mention Shark Jack, aka uh, Jetsam Glint from uh, ODAR, uh, is in the chat room. Hello, mate. Hey, Glint. Uh, so. Uh, shall we move on to? Uh, are you ready for fairy tale or? Sure. Yes, I can do fairy tale. Um, I've gone through the notes again, and I haven't added much, so I'm going to apologise for this now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Because okay, so fairy tale. It starts off with everyone, with all the dragon slayers appearing in the. Um, well, I I haven't added much. Because because there's not much to add in this chapter. Um, we start off with the dragons fighting Ecologia in the ravines of time, and everyone starts fighting him. Um, Wendy shows she's literally a a, um, a, a game character by just lit her, when her power is just I buff everyone's stats. Um, everyone charges at Ecologia but fails. Hold on, hold Wait, on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are, we doing, are we talking about the same chapter? It's uh, chapter no. five forty. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Come back to me again. <sighs> Shall we do one of my series? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so Black Clover... Oh, uh, damn it. Um, didn't sound like you were spoiling much. I wasn't really paying attention, but I just kind of heard bits and pieces that were like, mm, this everyone doesn't sound like the chapter that. I read. <laughs> yeah, everyone fight technology is not a spoiler, but I'm sorry, yes, that was 541. Yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, yeah, uh, ju- yeah, just in case we're we're always a week behind. I, 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 even, because, I even said yeah. in the Skype message five forty, just so you knew. But I opened it and then I clicked on five forty, and then my screen reloaded and I got to five four one. I didn't notice. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so so sh- all right. So maybe uh, shall we move on with Black Clover and the other ones, and then discuss Fairy Tale at the end? Sure. Um, uh, Black Clover. I, I, the only reason I suggest doing one of mine now is because then all, otherwise all of mine will be like loaded right to the end. Uh, so maybe, maybe do one of the jump starts now. Like I'll, do we to talk about Shudan? Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's go on with Shudan. All right. So, um, so yeah, Shudan chapter three. So Soshi, the main kid, he's ignoring Akira at school after his main friends have grilled him on what happened because you know he just went over to had her come over to his house, and they actually got a conversation going. But of course, you know, elementary elementary school awkwardness. It's got the cooties. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Girls are gross. Uh, And um, they play a match against a school that's been beating them for ages. Like, they've always lost to this school. And now that their team is actually functioning a bit better and they have Acura on the team, they're actually playing much better. Like, they're not... They're still behind at the halfway mark, but they're, um... They're, they're only just. They're only slightly by, like, a, a goal, one goal. Um... So, Roku, the friend character, tells Soshi to stop being stuff, such a stick in the mud about Acura and just act like normal. We need, you know, we need to win this match, and if you're, if you're being all weird about there being a girl on the team, it's, um, we're not gonna do it. <laughs> Um, so the other team are now being tougher on Akira because they actually see her as a problem. And there's a moment of, oh, why are you guys being so rough? But then it's realized, hey, they're not breaking any rules. And it just means that she is a, 
a competent enough player that they recognize her and she's she's actually happy that they're um that they're going all out on them so then so then they start playing again and Roku gets over himself finally and helps Akira out of a bind because the all of the players are around her, and he tells her, Oi, kick the ball upfield, I've got this. So he's finally actually communicating with her. Uh, so he gets the ball and scores a goal. Uh, after which, he apologizes for giving her the cold one that morning, and she punches him in the gut like, Hmm, took you long enough. And eventually they win the match. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was a sweet chapter. Um, clearly this series is more focused on the team dynamics aspect of the game than it is about showcasing the game, which is fine in my books because I find football bloody boring. Sorry, rest of my country. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's not, it's not so much there to showcase the match and all of the amazing abilities all the players have. It's more, it's more about team building and these two characters thus far, which, um, so far has been quite sweet. It's been, well executed enough. Don't know if I'd um. Don't know if I'd keep reading it, religiously, but I, I'd I'd be interested to check in on this again if it um if it gets picked up. Yeah, I'd I'd be interesting. I'd be interested to read uh another sports series, uh, especially with the sports that I'm kind of familiar with. Well, uh, well I suck at it anyway, but uh, yeah. but at least I, I guess I guess that is the good part. Like I. I know how football works. Yeah. So that part of it's been that that blank's been filled in. Yeah, but uh, yeah. basically the the rules are kind of simple. So, this, so uh, anyway, so I uh, so I look forward to, to it being picked up, and uh, I'm looking forward to the global release of Shonen and Jump finally happening. So so I can uh, read things with free conscience. Oh, cool. But uh, but but that's not happening right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I, I thought there was some really good news that I hadn't heard. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was just a what-if scenario. All right. Uh, so, uh, shall we move on to... Uh, okay, what shall we move on to then? Uh, 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 Black Clover, I guess. Okay. I can do Black Clover. Welcome to another... Ch okay. We started off with, I, we started off with me on Food Wars, which was essentially the chapter I had the most to say about because um, we're now going into the chapters. I had a bad week of, cha of chapters to recap this week, guys. So <laughs> welcome to Black Clover one fifteen, or this shonen is shonen. Okay, we start off with the three attacks from last week on the frozen Aster flying at them. And douchebag jerk guy wakes up, instantly absorbs all three attacks and sends them back at the other magical knights, instantly defeating them. Yep. I'll admit, it looks kind of cool, but just, yeah. Um, douchebag guy is then a douche. Um, to the, literally everyone around him to a, into an, I think, unintentionally comical effect because he's literally just like everyone hate me, I'm obviously the biggest douche on the planet, oh no, I'm secretly a good guy, you guys, I'm just I'm, I'm look, um, look at me writing interesting and non-normal characters as he literally walks over a guy says he's not going to destroy not, gonna, not going to destroy his crystal because he doesn't think as much of him and then just goes, lol, jokes, and destroys the crystal. Everyone then randomly wonders at his powers, which is weird, because I would have thought, being a magic, apparently if he's a magic knight, every, at least somebody, especially the wizard king, would know what his powers are, yet he's making Aster sparkly eyes at it. Aster is an shonen protagonist, as he randomly shouts at douchebag guy for being a douchebag, but really bringing up nothing in return apart from Hey, you shouldn't have done that because because they were doing their best as well. Instead of you know, hey, thanks, you you let it, you were a douche about it, but hey, you let us win. And then we go into a really really long internal internal mimosa recap of exactly what his ash powers are and how 
perfectly this guy apparently planned this entire match so he could he could instantly win every, plan everything else that everyone was possibly going to do and instantly win because he's that awesome you guys you don't get it and then Mimosa's brother turns up fabulously yeah you know there's there's a guy <laughs> in this chat that I'm in um it's just, it's, a, like, it's just a bunch of people I know on the internet, and he constantly shills Black Clover as, like, the best current shonen out, and I have no idea why. Uh, <laughs> it's fine, it's work. I find this character terribly annoying. It's not even this pretentious attitude he has, which makes him look down on everyone, uh, because uh, that can work pretty well. Well, if it weren't Black Clover, were in which uh, every single character does this. Um, but when you add this, <laughs> but when you add the stupid pranks, the, the 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 farting bug and all, it's just a combination that I'm going to hate um, without anything to make me. I don't know, relate to him or just understand him. So he's so yeah, he's so obviously just set up to be the this is the person that's powerful but you're not meant to agree with yeah. character. And it's it even when they set him up for that, the argument Asta has with him is not interesting. It's there's nothing about it that's new specific to Black Clover, specific to the situation. And it just feels like... And this guy is light levels of perfect. This guy can plan, has apparently planned an entire match out while sitting back and being a douche. Baby memories. I just, yeah, it, it, it just feels like... We are currently doing an event in our forum. Yeah? He write better than Black Clover has, has written this current arc. All of us. It it feels like bad fan fiction. This this style, and I don't. Ah, oh, it, it annoys me to so to no end. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I kn uh, I knew what was going to happen last chapter, even even though I I liked the last one. Well, I, I guess on the bright side, uh, uh, Kirsch, uh, Mimosa's brother, looks pretty fun, I guess. <laughs> it was quite funny at the end when he just turns up and Mimosa's just like... Okay, no, no, I was going to say the last page is okay, but then Asta does his Asta thing, just like, no, no, that's kind of spoiled it. <laughs> M Mimosa's at least interesting in this arc. I'll take, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. Right. We, can we just all agree that Black Clover's really, yes, especially black, bad at the moment. And there's not much we, we really need to I'd, really I'd need stop to reading about. it after chapter eighty. So <laughs> I don't oh, know. Yeah. I'm I'm still c kind of enjoying the idea of this arc, and maybe uh, when we move on to other characters than uh, than Asta and the, um, I'm I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to call him. Oh shit! And I was going to call him the, that um, that shark uh, uh, shark teeth guy from uh, from World Trigger, but uh, then I forgot uh, what his name was. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I'm. It's, what's bugging me more is we keep on seeing the rest of the crowd and all the other characters during the matches that are meant to be focusing on Asta, so she was just saying to me like. We're not going to see anyone else, are we? This is just going to be Asta after Asta after Asta, which is why everyone's popping up occasionally to remind us with to remind us they're still there. Kagayura, that that was his name. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes, it is far more important than than this entire chapter of Black Clover. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right then. All right. So, Promise Neverland. Uh, A chapter I liked this week. Let's go. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's chapter 44. And in this chapter of the, the Promised Neverland, we open with a faceless Don. Seriously, he hasn't got a face. What is up with that? Um, so who worries about the fate of the uh, rest of the kids? Um, then in the cover page, we, we see in another panel that the veiled woman um, is approaching the kids. Uh, she appears to speak in a human voice and tells them to come over with her. 
Mm. Then Gilda is sceptical as usual and questions why and how she's here, and above all else, tells her to show her face. Then we cut over to, to Ray, who is being chased by a dozen giant monsters. He notices their movements are coordinated, so he likely wants to tire him, and uh, then they likely want to tie him and then capture him alive. In his mind, Ray thinks of several patterns of possible escape, but uh, he eventually gets cornered. Uh, he is determined not to die, but then he collapses, exhausted. But then, another cloaked figure arrives on a demon horse of sorts. Um, picks Ray up and gallops away with him. So, I thought it was an okay chapter. Uh, so, not a lot really happens since it's mostly an action scene and on Team Gilda's end, not nothing's really moved forward. But, but Gilda had a no nice moment, yeah, so it was fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it was just me that really like like this chapter i thought was really good for black clover not black clover sorry i'm still i'm still <laughs> from um for this, was, this was a fantastic chapter of food wars <laughs> it would be fucking amazing for it would be a fucking amazing chapter of black clover just comparing them but no <laughs> um i in recent weeks i think i've i think i've said a couple of times that since they escaped from gracefield gracefield house i hadn't really been enjoying promise neverland because the kids hadn't seemed smart, they'd seemed bullshit. And this was, this was even beyond Ray. I really liked this chapter because for the first time they were battling, it was it was mind battles again. And that's what this series is really good at. And we'd got, they'd managed to find a way that the outside was again battles of minds between Ray and the demon dogs and Ray and the people chasing him and Ray for the first time seeming not bullshit competent but actually smart and competent of how he's just like okay if i do this and then that and i'm yeah, fighting a losing in the end battle. he does get caught yeah but he's fighting a losing battle to the point of I've, I've got to do everything i possibly can and then he still can't quite make it that was really cool and i also enjoyed gilda on the other on the other side because the all of the other people all the other children were being children just like yay someone's offering us help they so, 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 someone's offering us help. These can't, they can't be sinister at all. All they want to do is for us to get into the back of their van where they've got the candy. Um, so that was a nice touch to actually see Gilda be like, I don't trust this untrustworthy person that's smiling ominously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, um, which also fits into yeah. the character because she... Uh... Uh, she was um, earlier. She was skeptical about um, Emma's plan to take all the kids. So yeah, yeah. I'm. I did. Yeah. Um, Gilda got given a character in this chapter. I'm all for that. And Ray was able to be smart. I really like this chapter of Promise Neverland. Yeah, I'm gonna disagree with you uh, uh, just a little bit about Ray because I. Uh, I'm worried that that Ray has adopted a bit of a legless legless effect going by the uh, loss and ab adaptation terminology, uh, because uh, even though I uh, I like that uh, he he still didn't succeed in the end, uh, we've still seen a twelve-year-old child outrun a pack of supernatural hyper-intelligent demons for a good five minutes. Oh. I will give you that. I will give you that. Um, I was annoyed at that as well until I reread it and they mentioned the fact that he realized they were obviously just essentially playing with him. They were, I, I imagine them like yeah. looping along at like a lazy speed, letting him just be able to outrun them continuously. So he was burning as much energy as possible. So he, 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 he they would, he would eventually tire out and fall to the ground. Yeah. I, I, though I was still, I was still baffled by how, um, I guess ha how cool he seemed uh, uh, with him being the less physically active of the three main characters. But uh, but yeah, I, I get you. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, I, I had forgotten that. That is a bit bullshit, yes. <laughs> the entire thing was, I think, not do all the... All the I, I don't do all the sports. Yeah. Because that implies that Norman or Emma could have probably outrun them, and that's a bit... The, yeah, no, no, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, he's a he's a little perfect, but uh, but I I guess um, if written in the, if yeah <laughs> if written in the right direction, uh, he he could still be salvaged from that, in a way. But may, may, maybe I'm speaking too harshly. No, I had forgotten that. That that does sour it slightly. It was cool, but it was just like, yeah, you know what? This is getting this is getting a bit bullshit. <laughs> All right, so uh, have we got anything else to say? Or shall we move on to uh, We Never Learn? Uh, yep, all right. We can, we can move on to Takamoto Best Girl. I mean, We Never Learn. <laughs> 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 so, um, so Narayuki and Takamoto are both getting advice on what to do about the situation that they are in. Uh, Takamoto from her friends who are trying to set them up, and Narayuki from Furuhashi, who's trying to defuse the situation so that their grades go back up. Um, so uh, Furuhashi tells uh, tells Yuiga, okay, um, you need to think about their feelings, because she doesn't want to be too direct about it. She doesn't want to just be like, oh, they have a crush on you, and there's a misunderstanding and shit. But um, So he immediately interprets this as, oh, God, I've been getting way too close and friendly to them. I guess I've been making them uncomfortable. <laughs> um, oh, oh, which oh. is, yeah, it's quite sweet. Um, oh. Meanwhile, um, they've basically been, basically, um, Takamoto's friends are giving her all this advice on how to seduce Yuiya. Uh, so she comes off in a, she comes along in a rather <coughs> flattering outfit. And decides to walk home with him um, until they get lost and reach a shrine, which is dedicated to success in academic scholarship and in the fruition of romantic love, which ticks a box. <laughs> and, you know, t ticks a box in both of their heads, <laughs> respectively. Um, that was a great gag. Yes. And um, it starts just as they make the prayer. They, it starts raining, and. Um, and he asks her, hey, uh, so um, so you're finally getting serious about your exams, are you? She's like, oh, no, it's not about that. I just, I was just praying so I could uh, make my crush's heart race, you know, just casually. So then she decides to assume a vulnerable position, again, at the advice of her uh, um, friends, because she wants to get him to notice her. And then a bunch of cats start playing around with her, as cats do, uh, and she thinks it's Narayuki at first but then it, it turns out it's just cats. And it's funnier in the comic than the way I put it, because you only find out that it's cats at the end. But, you know, I had no way to comfortably word that otherwise. Anyway, uh, they walk home... <laughs> they walk home, and he he's averting his eyes. And when she asks why, he's like, um, uh, I can see down your shirt. So um, she no she then notices that his heart is actually racing. And he tells her the reason for this is because of the way that she's been behaving around him and that she should uh, save it for her crush. And then she goes, yeah, you're right. I should. And uh, they all go home and her grades are better now. So um, I guess overall, uh, it was, I, I thought this chapter worked okay. Uh, it, it resolved the tension between them, which is nice. Um, while, not while not having her directly confess because the show must go on. I think... <laughs> I think next chapter will um, it will ta obviously next chapter will tackle Ogata, but I don't think it'll be resolved as quit like it won't be wrapped up in as neat a bow. I don't think because he's she's the one he accidentally kissed. So I think there is more material they will probably drag out of that. Yeah. Uh. D uh. Okay. In the official release, um, uh, how is um, how does Yuiga's explanation of why his heart is racing go? Uh, it goes like this. Well, what do you expect? I mean, you get all close and vulnerable and stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, and the next page? Uh, you should save that kind of thing for when you're around your crush. You could get into trouble. Okay, uh, be because in... Okay. <laughs> um, uh, as you might remember, uh, I... I'm not uh, from an English-speaking country, uh, so uh, I don't have access to the official release. So in the scans I am reading, it says, 
you shouldn't be wearing such an outfit in front of anyone other than the guy you like. It could be dangerous. Yeah, no, but uh, which like, when I first read... Yeah. The fuck? Yeah, the... when, I, when I first read through that, I thought that was what he said, but then I read through it again, I was like, no, he's... He, what, he doesn't say that. Okay, so, um, so, so it it's no. much sweeter and um, yeah. much much less patronizing th than in this game. If he said that, that would have been bad. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> have, have, has anyone checked the original Japanese? That that's not the English translation team yeah. being like, let's yeah. not make let's make this person mm. not the big douchebag on the planet. <laughs> Who knows? Uh. Yeah, that. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. S I still can't access any sites that let me read a couple of the series, and unfortunately, we never learn as one of them at the moment. Really? So, I, thought, I thought you were several chapters ahead of us at one point. I was, and then we caught up. But ah. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah. Cause... yeah. Um, we were in it. That was a time when I exploded because I saw that. I I think I saw the front page of chapter seven, and it was yeah. eleven. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, um, I, I, I want to read this chapter. That sounds very funny, and I yeah, want. It's, it's the quite cat. funny and sweet. Yeah, it's it's a pretty funny chapter, apart from Yuiga being a little patronizing on my end. Uh, although I get, I guess, uh, I just find everything patronizing this week. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm um, using that think... word a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. Uh, obviously, I've I've always. I've always been a, a champion of the of the Takamoto camp, but um, yeah. I've noticed people finding her very erratic behavior early on in the series quite annoying, and I feel like the last two chapters focused around her have made her much more relatable and less overbearing, um, which has been nice to see. Yeah, yeah. especially when she doesn't uh, have the opportunity to grope Ogata. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had noticed that the people I talked to, the difference was the people who didn't like it tended to be American, and the people I talked about in in, in English and uh, that liked her early on, well, were English. And I was, okay. I was just wondering if, if it's wondering to do with because I don't know because like I've been uh, I've been yeah. posting screenshots to my friends and they've all been like, oh that pink haired girl because she's pink in the color spread. Oh she's a cutie. She's really she seems really cool. So maybe I don't know. Yeah. It's weird because I talked to the, the Americans I talked to instantly labeled her as like, oh, uh, the, the idiot, uh, as essentially the idiot jock character. And oh, I, I don't find that funny at all. I'm just wondering if it's like Maybe the it's a cultural thing. Yeah, the, like if like the nerd jock divide is just a, a lot stronger in America than England. And it's just like, I read manga. I can't like jo I can't like the jock character. They're my mortal enemies. We, we have to kill each other every year. <laughs> Um, uh, I don't know, prom or homecoming. I'm not entirely sure what goes on in American high schools, but I, th but I, th I we th had think we just had two proms and they were just like regular parties, nothing that special. <laughs> yes. Also, our final year proms have alcohol in them because we can drink because we're better. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the perks of being British. <laughs> All right. All right then. So, Doctor Stone. Yep. All right then. So that's chapter sixteen, and it turns out that Barnaby was speaking right. Of, and patronizing. hey, speaking of speaking of being patronizing, Spe Doctor Stone this. Week. Speaking of prom, uh, Doctor Stone this week. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to be taken out to prom in this chapter. And I'm five billion years late for prom. <laughs> So, okay, so it turns out that Barnaby was right, and we're indeed going to be focusing on Senku's journey to find new human allies to take down Takasa. Uh, he just hopes he hasn't made contact with them first, and as it turns out, he has! Uh, so we find out he's met with the uh, high-heeled girl we saw, saw before, and we see her uh, attack Takasa with a barrage of knife work h hidden in a bouquet. Um, she then uh, Sanji kicks him with an impossible pose, kind of bending over behind like like Hancock, uh, only even further, so that it looks like uh, as if she's broke her spine. Is it, did you gather that? Contortionist? Maybe. <laughs> People can. It's 
it's not yeah it's like well when we get to the reveal later it made a bit more sense but it's still a bit like i don't think human bodies can bend that way yeah so tsukasa is surprised by a uh, fighting prowess but he finds it more interesting that uh, when she relates the events from her perspective she refers to senku as a sorcerer uh, he concludes that some people must have already broken out of stone uh, several generations ago, and that uh, she must be the descendant of those people. And then he punches down a tree and fells it onto the cave girl, trapping her. Uh, that was... No, speaking of things human bodies can't do... <laughs> <laughs> that was the best... Uh, I, I laughed so hard when I saw like, her being crushed by an apparently one-ton tree. He, he's got such a goofy face for Tsukasa, too. <laughs> Oh, well, he's doing that. Traps <laughs> <laughs> you perfectly without breaking any bones. I did it with one punch. You're welcome. Uh, so Senku approaches carefully, carefully, and after Tsukasa leaves, he frees the cave girl by constructing a pulley, and using it to reduce the force required to lift the tree trunk. And then we find out that the uh, girl's name is Kohaku, uh, as she proclaims she now really likes Senku. Or as, or as it's said in the, the video yeah. translation, I've fallen, I do believe, I've fallen for you quite hard. Okay. So she, it's odd, she's oddly formal in the uh, in the Fizz version. Like, that must just be her, her speech quote. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, let's let's you let's use the posh caster voice uh, for her. My name is Kamaku, and I do believe I've fallen for you quite hard. <laughs> Senku boy. <laughs> oh God! Some week yeah. when I'm not on, you guys need to come up with a, a silly a silly voice for me. <laughs> Ooh, uh, we've got to uh, we've got to do a silly voice for Jonah. So, yeah? Oh, I... Oh, I, I really hate Chiaki. She's my least favorite dangly rampa, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Canadian okay. accent? <laughs> no, it, it actually... It, no, that actually sounded oddly like him, despite being Iago from Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so we, we have... Um, we have Tim Curry Caster and we have Gilbert Godfrey uh, Jonah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. I can't wait for what, what to come up for me. What did people think of this Doctor Stone chapter? Because I'm in t two very, very big minds. Yeah, I am in two very big minds on it as well. Because um, on the one hand, I really liked him devising the pulley and working yeah. all that stuff out. Yeah. I'm just not too sure about this new character, uh, and her just suddenly, oh, she's suddenly a love interest for him. I'm, I'm in two minds about her specifically, because I really like the idea of there being a second generation, of her being a second generation human, of yeah. her parents simply seems to have been yeah, trapped yeah. in her, but she, it's very heavily implied she wasn't, so she doesn't understand any of humanity, yeah, or we... any of science. Or even grandparents, or, yeah, a few generations yeah. of humans out there, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I can definitely see, so I like, and also I, it would fit in, like, I'm at, I don't know if they, like, told her bed, bedtime stories, because her entire worldview seems to be, seems to fit a bit on, at the moment of she's living in a fantasy land where sorcerers exist. Which yeah, would explain, it's like the, oh, the, the tribal voodoo thing. The yeah. Whole su yeah, superstition of primitive people. And I really like the idea. Well, okay. I like the concept of giving Senku the love interest of your, your, your of your, of, I have, of essentially, I have all, all the power of nature. You're, you're obviously a wizard. I may burn you at the stake if I have the chance. <laughs> like, that's a cool relationship for a relationship. My problem is she looks 12. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Wait, um, does she? I, I don't. I don't think she does. <laughs> Why does everyone look twelve to you, Caster? Even the girls from We Never exist, Learn. You know. 
okay, okay. I think the she looks like a petite young woman, personally. Okay. Like, those okay. hips are way too wide for a 12-year-old. Okay, I'm going to bring up the page again so I can double-check, because that's one of my problems. The other one is that... Uh, we had a woman... We, it was nice to have a woman fight in this series. And she got handled really, really quickly, and she's declared her love for one of the main characters. Yeah, that, that was really the whole issue with the love interest thing. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Not, not, so much the pos- not so much the possible dynamic. Like, that could be cool. Yeah, the... Um, uh, I, yeah. It's the... Uh, Kohaka's introduction reeks a little bit of wish fulfillment, but um, even... Even though I've got mixed feelings about her introduction, I can see the dynamic between a scientist and a cave and a practically a cave girl potentially being kind of uh, kind of fun. You can so. get a lot of good, yeah, good character yeah. interaction, funny jokes out of that. Um, I yeah, on like on like the way on the the way her age looks, I think a, um, I can kind of understand with the face just because both the female characters in this series do have quite sort of doll like youthful faces aside from that petite woman do exist like yeah. i don't think it's uh, i don't think it's that much of a stretch to think that she's an adult yeah. i just based purely on her body yeah the, i mean the the last pan- panel okay. doesn't seem to you. suggest that okay. uh, that she's you know or 12 looking I- no, I, I think that's a bit much. Yeah. Um. So lastly, I like the development of the. I, I, oh. I, I may have. It, I may have reacted. Reacted. Okay. So yeah. I like the development of the already being a few generations of humans out there, and I'm waiting to see how this changes the already established established premise of Tsukasa and Senku, uh, as, of the conflict between Tsukasa versus Senku. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, shall we move on? Are you, re- to... are you, are you really ready with really Are you ready with fairy tale yet, yeah, or shall I shall I do the drop the bomb? So, should we save cross account for I last? I can do fairy tale. Or... Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> save the best for last, okay. guys. <laughs> I have, I have, I found the final page. I found the final page. Yep. Those hips are not the hips of a twelve-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm a lot more comfortable with this with this development now. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a bit. Yeah. Well, when we're doing cross account, I hope uh, I hope Jonah's listening. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, uh, before we do fa- before we do fairy tale, I'm uh, I'm just gonna uh, say that. Uh, uh, the cover page for the for the next few weeks until until fairy tale actually ends uh, is is gonna be. Um, uh, is going to be a lot of um, uh, WMR, uh, a lot of our WMR um, in jokes uh, for this series. So yeah, no, we're starting out with Frosh being kicked by someone. Good. I I think I th- hope it's uh, visible well, that, uh, that it Frosh is a shoe. The main, remember when Frosh was the main villain of that thread we did? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> And th- and then That's we essentially the d- essentially yeah. didn't have the time to finish that. Yeah, we're just gonna turn into a giant frog frosh. <laughs> he could turn into the Anthrothal man. And, and then I just went and I went mate, mate, mate. Uh, and I was like, I dunno, he's kind of a comedy character and Wednesday Dale went, No, no! there's no such thing as comedy characters, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and then and then he was adopted by Tom and uh, Tom kind of forgot that uh, that he was even a uh, 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 a frog, um, a frog cat hybrid, in the first place uh, in our canon. So yeah. <laughs> of course, that, that would require him to read someone else's stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's let's move on to fairy tale. Moving on. <laughs> Moving very quickly on. Okay. Fairy tale, chapter five forty. So you know how I was saying how all the how um all the dragon slayers are complete are tra- um were coming out to fight. I was completely wrong. They're completely and eternally trapped in crystals, never coming out ever, <laughs> ever, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. So Natsu's facing down Ak- Acnologia, who gives kind of a cool speech on I shall saying I shall surpass time and space itself to essentially be the main villain of this series. 
because fuck you, Zara. You, you know, <laughs> I had to one up you somehow, <laughs> which I'm going to admit was kind of cool. Then everyone yells at the sky for some reason, and Anna and a Chiyu turn back up because of course they do. <laughs> <sighs> it's she uh, posing unconscious because god forbid there be a tragic element in fairy tale god forbid we then get it explained to us that and bear with me here it's a bit of a complex idea that acknowledges body and soul have currently been divided so his dragon body is currently fighting everyone on in Magnolia, while his mind is trapped in the ravines of time and fighting Natsu with the trapped dragon slayers, which yeah. is why we keep on flashing between the person acknowledge and the dragon acknowledge because we're switching between the body and soul. Which means all the fairy tale members have to go and track down all his Horcruxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, but I don't think you're quite getting this. You see, <laughs> acknowledge divided between body and soul. Like, like you know the bit where we see the human acknowledge. That's his yeah. soul, right? And when he's <laughs> fucking up Magnolia, that's his body. Like, we, we're, we're all on board, right? We all, yeah. we all get <laughs> and, and, the, and then freaking <laughs> angels are just, hmm, it's too complicated for me to understand. Okay, okay, okay. Flash then, red. okay. Yeah. Then mess, okay, then we flash back to um, Urza shouting at the sky, and mess turns up. Because of course he does. Oh yeah, and also Makarov's alive because that's all I'm giving that scene because that's all that's all Hero decided to pay attention to it. Then we oh, oh um, also Natsu's been being tortured and stuff with the crystals. We kept cutting back to that, but nothing was happening, so I didn't think it was worth mentioning. But okay, look guys, I can't concentrate. I don't think you get it. <laughs> you see, Acnologia's body has been split between body and soul. Thank so... you, Casta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Do you get the idea of how often this chapter repeats that message and how fucking hammered, it, hammered in it is? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's almost a, 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 like we couldn't understand uh, why the Emperor never loved his child. I mean... <laughs> oh yeah, and then all the dragon slayers break out of um, the crystals because... Fairy Tale can't have tension chapter to chapter. All right. Uh, I'm just going to say, um, I thought this chapter was all right. Uh, okay. it, fulfilled the, it fulfilled the one obligation that I expect from this series at this point, which is to have a cool showcase of all these characters with shared trait from across the series are fighting this guy at the same time, which, you know, there's a little 12-year-old boy at my heart that kind of gets into that and and i feel like that is the base appeal that fairy tale is quite good at playing to like having oh natsu and gray are gonna fight the bad guy at the end of tartarus you know gajil and natsu are gonna fight sting and rogue you know as a as a two-on-two i all of the fight matchups are the one thing that i think fairy tale can play to in kind of a cool fun way so yeah all of the dumbness caster mentioned still applies but what do we expect at this point and um, just the mere fact that we've got we're involving more of the characters in this final fight and that it's a Dragon Slayers versus Ultimate Dragon Slayer thing makes it more promising to me than the Zera fight was. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I did... That... Yeah, yeah. You do go on, Kester. I was just going to mention that I'd agree that the, the section of the, of the if we all stand together to fight technology is a, really, is a cool moment. It's three pages out of this twenty. Oh, it's three pages out of the entire chapter, though. So it's just... And the only three pages that left an impact. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here, <laughs> folks. The only way to enjoy fairy tales is to literally forget <laughs> a fifth of the chapter or six. You know, I didn't even. Do you know what was worse? I didn't even realize they were frozen in crystals. Like they broke up that quickly that I just kind of so thought, awful. okay. I, I kind of I skimmed over it the first time. I was like, okay, I guess they're temporarily frozen there until they arrive or something. Yeah, and the, <laughs> no, the, the, they, they uh, the, the the truth is is simpler than that. They just broke out because friendship. God. 
But yeah, because apparently they managed to break out because the people in the real world shouted their names. Which apparently, if that's how it works, it's it's a really shitty um, way of trapping them. Yeah. If that's how yeah. Acnologia's magic works. I, uh, he, the guy who was, who, who declared he has transcended time and space, it was like, oh yeah, if you like, if if I if you if someone says your name three times into a mirror, they can summon you and free you or something. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm riffing on fairy tale because. <laughs> Also, yeah, I like, I, I've just yeah. realised. If only Hero mentioned uh, mentioned that, uh, it would be a perfect way to uh, to explain why Acnologia sent them there. Uh, uh, because the Dragon Slayers, they uh, they might have the edge uh, when they're fighting him in dragon forms. So that's uh, why he's going to find them in human form. Of course, it, it, if only Hero just said that. Uh, I I will praise him for that. No, oh, but Cheddar, you don't get it. Akmog just split his body and soul between two different places. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, and 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 of course, uh, and of course, um, Anna and Chia are fucking alive because why wouldn't they be? Uh, he, he, he was making me fucking miss Kubo. It's like I said, it's like, it's, like, it's like an ongoing series of, oh, there we go, I've made the most underwhelming, rushed finale to a shonen ever. Oh, hold my beer. <laughs> like, from Naruto to this, it's just been a progression of that. But <laughs> when we complained that um, Kaguya wasn't an impressive villain, I would... I miss the days when that was the that was the that was the worst example of an ending we'd seen. I'll say this: I was much more bored during the Shinobi War than I am during this. Like this, I'm just confused and sort of. Well, yeah, you, you only remember three pages of a chapter every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess the, this is this this is a little more entertaining with how bad it is, but yeah. Yeah. Speaking of ent entertainingly bad. <laughs> Shall I, shall I uh, give you guys the rundown on Cross Account? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. go on then. Alright, Cross Account, Chapter 2, Fake X Real. So, MC Kun is still regarded as Mr. Harmless to most, but then, when because it's manga universe where the wind will blow up everyone's skirts, as soon as his best friend character, Takamine, notices that he's dis he's seen her, She's now a shitty sundere to him because who doesn't love badly characterized annoying sundares? Oh, and um, and she just hits him on the head uh, for something that he had no control over. Uh, now wait, <sighs> because, because now she she knows she actually now that she knows he actually has a, a huge manly penis, so she can so she can she doesn't view him as harmless anymore. <laughs> Listen, guys, the reason girls hit you for staring up their skirts is because they respect you as a man. <laughs> yeah, and so um, so we so then we move on to Nanoka, the actress that he had a crush on, who's secretly poop head on the forum, uh, and uh, she's doing some she does some swimsuit modeling for the camera because as we're introduced to her, because we need some cheesecake shots of that, uh, and she's like, and to all of her to all of her cameramen, she's like, thank you for cheering me on. I look forward to working with all of you again. And everyone's like. I want to marry her. And then we smash cut from like her being all glitzy, like you know she's this number one, uh, most popular female star, and because she's got a clean and flowery image, she attracts support from all ages and genders. And then we cut for that to like her being an otaku. And I don't know if you guys have heard of a show. There's an anime called Himoto Umaru-chan. This is literally that. It's like you know really super popular glamorous girl then at night she turns into a little chibi yeah. goblin thing and like you know watches loads of anime and, and and shit posts all the time and eats eats unhealthy food it's literally that right down to the fact that she's drawn all like stocky and chibified in these scene in this scene <laughs> Uh, and she's like, oh, she, you know, she snacks on all this unhealthy food, but she can totally work it off at the gym, guys. And she buys oh, these okay. life-size figures of video game mascots from 
Guess Who Dola 5. Oh my god. <laughs> and, um, anyway. and so we learn after this obligatory bath scene that we needed to take a whole page <laughs> for. <laughs> I... it was the... Just after a cheesecake shot at a pool? Yes, yeah. Uh, no, she wasn't even at a pool. She was just doing swimsuit modeling. Okay. Like with a green screen. <laughs> um, uh, what the fuck? So we learn after this past that she's always been pressured by her strict mother to pursue acting and that she's been hiding her true self. And she comes home after a day of <laughs> acting and just collapses onto the floor like, am I going to be alone forever? Uh, you know, super popular <laughs> actress who has everything. <laughs> And then she goes on her forum in a moment of desperation and sees a post from Mr. our main character, Mr. Harmful, who, by the way, can I just point out, confirmed member of the alt-right, because earlier on in the chapter, he was just tweeting, like, mark my words, you stupid girls who treat me like a bug. Every single man in the world is essentially a predator in his head. Oh, my God. So, so this is Mr. Wow. Charming. Right? And she, well, the tweet that she sees is him going... In the end, I was a phony, yet again. And she is so overwhelmed with emotion. Like, she feels such a connection to him that she just breaks down and cries. And she's like, I finally found someone I can connect with. Well, and, um... Was this the and first so... time she went on the internet? Yeah. Was this and... the first person she'd ever talked to in her life? And so, only through talking to him can world-famous actress Nanoka Sutsatsuki become who she really is like that's literally the word she uses like i i don't feel alone anymore <laughs> thanks to you even tomorrow i can go back to being an actress uh so <laughs> after all that bollocks, she um she considers messaging him asking hey do you want to meet meet up irl but then she deletes the message she's like no no no, that, that can never happen um i i shouldn't ex because she shouldn't what? expect anything more you know, she's not worth this online otaku misogynist oh. blandhood. Um, but then she gets a message from him going, "Hey, uh, I got I got Nanoka's phone book last night, uh, and uh, apparently they're having a book release handshake event. And I entered the lotter lottery, and guess what? I won the ticket. I get to shake hands with my favorite actor. And like, so they're gonna meet after all. Oh my god. You know." I've got to say, Holy shit. I really hope this gets picked up <laughs> because with fairy tale ending, I've got to wonder what are we going to have left to shout at? <laughs> what are we going to have left? <laughs> our minds over. And I think this could be it. I, uh, I know uh, Nova legitimately despises this series, but I have both weeks I've recapped this. I've had so much fun with it. So I'd love it if they pick this up. I could see, see it. That's a train wreck of a series that goes <laughs> i could see this being really harmful but being really uh, yeah. a terrible message to yeah. to young people nowadays but by <laughs> god i want to fucking read this yeah. i want to read and this and see how terrible this is i know right and that's the thing like between this and shudan shudan is a much better put together series you know it's a very sweet it um it actually handles the female love interest in a very progressive and positive way. And it's well put together. But I just want to see this train wreck <laughs> continue so much more. And I'm so sorry about that, guys. <laughs> yeah. this, this train wreck has a potential... And the worst part is, I and the worst part is, I think it's probably going to be more popular knowing no, no oh, attack will, on light. Oh. It will be the sad white is night. My, uh, well, um, my conscience, my conscience says uh, no, no, no. The, uh, there's no way this should get picked up. But, uh, but. Uh, Trump is the president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say that anymore. You can't say that there's no way this will happen. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah. That that was a cross account. Oh my god! Shoot on the the, the new jumps the new jump starts are essentially the 2016 election. How did I not see this? Wow. <laughs> cross account the Donald Trump of anim of manga. <laughs> I know. It's literally oh. Also, yeah, I, I mentioned this on Twitter, but cross account 
between Cross Account and a few recent anime, there seems to be a growing trend uh, in Japanese attack like you know media of um incredibly implausible uh badly yet ba contrived pseudo harems based around uh, online pseudonyms and yeah um it doesn't look like it's going away yeah i oh uh, i still can't get over how terrible this series is <laughs> <laughs> about how it takes the worst human being on the planet and they reward him for everything he does. It's like he tweets all this stuff about girls and she's like, no, the only reason she, she doesn't want to, to see him IRL is because she's afraid that he wouldn't like her because she's a girl. And, be and because she's so worthless and not worth anything. Oh. Because all men are predators and women should... <sighs> Holy shit! It's amazing. It's uh Takamoto, oh, yeah. you shouldn't wear that. God, Yuiga looks like a saint compared to this guy. Even yeah. even the obnoxious version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. Society Yuiga is better than this. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Shall we wrap up? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I, 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 I can't be yeah. yeah, yeah. Right guys. Wow. So, that is going to do it for this week of Stammer Stream. <laughs> Yay. Th th thank you I for watching. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I need to rethink some things. This is... <laughs> it's, you, I, I couldn't quite believe just how... I, I couldn't quite believe what I was reading. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna have if, if if it would ruin it for me to read this now. Or if they really You've got this have... picture of it in your head. <laughs> yeah. Just... Well, I might actually read the first chapter in Japanese by picking up last week's jump. So I might actually like skim through and say, okay, this is where this happens. This is where this happens. Yeah. Oh God, these seems like um, I can essentially these this is fan this is fan service fan fictiony. Yeah. Oh, I wanna. I don't know. Part of the fun of this is just that what is just uh, this cap is. I, mm, I think the part that gets on my nerves the most is the fact that um the best friend character is just uh calls you pathetic and and you know steps on you type sundere, which is like my least favorite type of that character uh, it, and a really bland one as well. If yeah. if if this series gets picked up um and if Shudan gets picked up, then we've got to finish up with Shudan or with any other. I guess good manga, but because otherwise I'm I'm kind of thrown off at the end. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna finish with the most boring, non-controversial manga ever, so, so that we can wrap up nice and neatly. I mean, to be to be fair, we're well under two hours. So. True. Ooh. You know, I've just realised the most the easiest, most least controversial manga we have is Fairy Tale, because we're <laughs> all. It's terrible. And yeah, we, all agree, we all agree it's a mess. <laughs> all right. So, uh, shall we thing, uh, finish things up, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, once again, that is going to do it for this week of Summer Stream. Thank you for watching, either on my YouTube channel or live at twitch.tv slash Cheddar. We usually try to record on Tuesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, 5pm GMT and 6pm GMT plus one. You can follow me on Twitter, at Winsley Cheddar, for updates on the stream, on Penganta, Friendly Faces Everywhere, Ify Reviews, and many, many other projects. Uh, fo follow Milo at Hovener with an H for anime waifus, Cabal Hijinks, and Cabal Cast, which is definitely coming, guys. Um, follow our cur currently absent co host, Dr. Nova at Jono Left Snow for his WMR Choose Your Own Adventure game, the link to which you'll find in the YouTube description below, and follow Caster UK for absolutely nothing. One now. week, I'm going to do something just to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, be sure to visit our One Piece RP forum, uh, One Dream Adventure Reborn, to write some lovely stories with us and talk about manga in general. ODR odar.comforums.com is the address, uh, and I, I would sh um, uh, I would invite you to come come over and take part in the event. But uh, the but the first round is uh, 
is just about to finish up, so, uh, so, so I'm not... Two days with an entire story. Have fun! Yeah. And get a character approved. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm really enjoying the boss threads, though. Uh, it's especially, I, uh, I love, uh, the first post you put out in the Zulian fightcaster. Um, uh, th that was a really, uh, cool, resp uh, cool response to that monologue. I, I had, yeah, and I just got, I had meant to start with the response and then wrote like half a page of history on, on the joke of how many things can I miss, can I misconstrue how the dwarves doing? Just like, <laughs> how many ways can I say last Tuesday? Yeah. 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 You, you, you've, you've expanded on that, uh, yeah, in a great way. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently looking how, I want to see how the, um, the Medela fight goes. Mostly because I want to see how a thread with about fifteen PCs <clears throat> possibly works. Yeah, but I've I've just uh, uh, yeah uh, in my first post I've posted the uh, Kevlar Anel face, which I've been um, <laughs> I, I I've been looking for an opportunity to to put that in uh, in a long time, and yeah, finally. Yeah, it was cool. I like that. Oh, thanks. So yeah, uh, um, join the forum, uh, and uh, once again, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Uh, take care. Bye. Bye.